<laughs> hey guys, it's Michael Levine. I got a phone call the other day from one of my stylists and she was a little bit concerned. She had been having a conversation with one of her clients and had told that client something about another client and that was a mutual acquaintance of both and basically inadvertently had found out through that little bit of information um, that it turned out that those two might have been having an inappropriate relationship since somebody might have been married. And um, and she phoned me and she was kind of freaking out. Oh my God, what am I supposed to do? Because when this guy comes in, now I have said too much. I didn't know this was happening. I'm going to feel awkward. All of these things. And it got me really, really thinking about the deeper aspect of what we do as hairdressers and all of us who've been doing hair for a long time we're all aware of this and we've all had you know the story about the the two clients kind of connecting and the um possible inappropriate relationships and all that kind of stuff you've all heard this 10 times 20 times maybe if you're a small town you hear it all the time um you know i'll, I'll tell you when my wife and i had a two-chair salon it was just the two of us my wife one of her clients was having an affair with one of my very best client's husbands. And it took us a little while to figure out who she was talking about. But anyways, we made this connection and it turned out this was happening. And, and you know, I couldn't say anything uh, because I wasn't part of the information. My wife, you know, just had to sort of play it cool. And, you know, my wife's not the type to keep her mouth shut if she has an opinion. But at the same time, she's not going to, you know, blast somebody and say, get your shit together. Like, do you, do you honestly think he's being totally honest to you about how bad it is at home? And as an aside, they're still together. And as far as I know, she never found out. But for us as hairdressers, we very often have to just kind of listen to these things and be be involved in it and not pass too much judgment, at least not in front of the client. The client. But we all know we judge them massively when we're on a break and <laughs> gossiping in the staff room if it's a gossipy kind of thing if it's a good gossip sometimes it's it's stuff that we would absolutely not want to talk to people about and sometimes these things are really really serious you know as i said we've all had these kind of juicy gossipy kinds of things um but you know what about um you know but what about the deeper stuff and what really kind of got me thinking about the deeper stuff there was a car accident locally a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago and basically it was a situation where uh, this mother's children went out for a drive with their grandpa and it was just sort of a day kind of drive around town sort of thing anyways they got t-boned by a drunk driver and all three of them were dead uh, four of them sorry the three kids and grandpa so basically in the blink of an eye uh, mom lost her family and it, it's it's beyond comprehension what that must be like for this person but for me as a hairdresser the first thing i'm thinking of is that lady has a hairdresser somewhere and that hairdresser in the next you know could be in the next two weeks that lady's going to be sitting in that hairdresser's chair uh, and if she's getting her hair colored or something she could be in there for upwards of three hours of of a captive audience with this hairdresser and and what a what a position that this hairdresser is now in because that visit is going to be a very very different visit than this lady's previous visits and this hairdresser has to be be there for this person um, and and in many ways we as hairdressers are um, some of our our relationships with our clients are extremely deep in that the not in that we're super close friends but in the the clients will sometimes tell us things that they'll not tell other people because they know we're safe and we're not necessarily part of their inner circle so they can say things and this hairdresser you know it's not a situation where the hairdresser can be oh yeah well what else is going on i mean it this is the topic i mean this is what's going on and this lady's going to be an absolute emotional wreck or something and you have to be what that person needs you to be as a hairdresser now my wife's clientele they they tended to be really deeply emotional and my clientele tended to be very aggressive kind of business people very kind of black and white no bullshit people well and and for me that's the way I like it and you know your clientele is attracted to you because you are kind of like them so whatever you put out that's what you're gonna get back with your clientele and so my clientele tended to be a little bit like me they tended to be successful business people because I'm super successful in business um and my wife's were you know a little more emotional because that's her would no matter what your clientele is like at some point your super together no bullshit clientele 
is going to have problems in their lives. There's going to be stuff. They're going to go through divorces. There, um, There's going to be a death in their family. There's going to be stuff where they're going to call on you and you've got to be kind of ready for it and, um, and prepared that that's what that visit is going to look like at some point. And for me, it was kind of a hard thing because I, I don't know what to say. And just as an aside, when these things do come up, sometimes the best thing, if you're a guy like me and you just, you just don't know what to say, just simply, you can say, wow, I'm, I'm so sorry, I don't even know what to say. And, you know, give the person a hug and, and just let them take this thing in the direction that they would like to take it and give you as much information as, as they're willing to give. And just sort of be what it is they need you to be, just like we always do. You know, I had a client that um, I'd been doing her hair for about 12 years, every four weeks, and she was kind of a cool older lady. A client was in every four weeks getting her hair cut and colored, and she was one of my favorite clients. She had pretty cool hair. She's one of these kind of older women with, who would sort of let me do whatever I wanted with her hair color, and it was, you know, shorter cut, but fun colors. And, uh, and we all have a client like this in our clientele. Anyways, she came in and, and she told me that she had cancer, and she is this lady was tough and she was one of the coolest ladies that I've ever met and and her story was amazing like just an incredible woman but uh so she had cancer and she's like yeah it's it's terminal there's no cure but I'm gonna fight this thing and I'm gonna be around for a long time and I think they had given her like six months to a year so I'm with her through the cancer and it was cool because of how aggressive she was and how positive she was that it made it much easier for me as her hairdresser to have dialogue. I could actually have conversations about it. One day she stopped coming in. Now her previous couple of visits, she had definitely sort of taken a decline, but she had, she was tough as nails for like three years and, and had done some traveling and all this stuff. So I, I had kind of been lulled into a false sort of thinking, wow, she's going to beat this thing or really, really cling. Anyways, she it dipped and we talked about it and then she stopped coming in. And sure enough, I got a call within the month that she had passed away. Now, I've never been to uh, a client's funeral, but this was, this was a different situation for me. So... Um, I talked to my wife about it and I said, what do you think? Like, should I go? I feel like I want to, but at the same time, I feel really, really awkward. I mean, it's it's one of these things that I just struggle with, as many of us do. And uh, I ended up going, I went by myself and I sort of snuck in the back and I sat in the back row of the um, chapel or of the funeral home. And through the service, it, you know, I had quite a few of my clients. I could see the backs of their heads in the in the room. There was probably four, maybe four or five people that were either clients or former clients of mine, and um, it was really, really amazing. In this in the service, they had mentioned her hair three times, and for me, it was like, wow, that that was really it was really profound and kind of powerful for me, and it made me feel really, really good. As I was really upset, you know, I'm I'm an emotional guy, and I try to I try to <laughs> hammer that, and stifle it, and you know beat it down so it doesn't show but um, I'm an emotional guy and it was a really really powerful thing for me and uh, you know the second this thing was over I booked it out of there because I didn't want to be caught up in conversations where people are like and this is Michael this was her hairdresser for all those pictures that they showed you know in the last 10 minutes of this chronological um, photo gallery up on the screen what so much of a this was my haircuts and my colors and I just didn't want to get into a dialogue of that but it, for me it was a, as a hairdresser it was a really really powerful thing so it, you know in hairdressing schools they don't really talk about this kind of stuff and I think it's a really really important thing to also prepare that younger generation that it's not all kind of glamorous hair well first of all it's never glamorous anyways but it what we do runs so so much deeper than just doing hair 